Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a polynomial cubic equation. And we have a radical on the right hand side, so that kind of complicates things. Obviously, there are several ways to do this problem, one of which is the cubic formula. So here's how it goes, I'm not going to complete it because it's probably going to be, it's probably going to be a little messy, I haven't checked it, but I'm just going to show you the approach, hopefully you can take it from there. So suppose that's my first method. Again, that's going to be incomplete because you will complete it, right? Hopefully. And let me know what you got. So the cubic formula works like this. We write a plus b cubed. And from that, we subtract 3ab times a plus b. And if you do that, you're going to get the binomial theorem with four terms. Uh, the middle terms are going to cancel out. And then we're going to end up with a cubed plus b cubed, which is the first and the last term. Great. So this is how does it help? Well, here's the secret sauce. If you set a plus b equal to x, you get x cubed plus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed. And if you compare this equation to the given equation, they're going to see some similarities. Let me copy that equation here. x cubed plus x equals 3 root 2 over 4. Hopefully you can see what I see. Take a look at these two equations and compare them term by term. You're hopefully going to realize or notice the following. I see that x cubed is equal to x cubed, so that's good. I have an x here, I have an x here. What about the coefficients? Because these are two polynomials that are supposed to equal each other. For cer certain values of a and b, that's what we're going to find. Here the coefficient of x is 1, here the coefficient of x is negative 3ab, so negative 3ab equals 1 implies ab equals negative 1 third. Great. What about the constant? I have a cubed plus b cubed, which is supposed to equal 3 root 2 over 4. So that gives us another equation, and obviously there's a couple different ways to look at it, one of which is something uh, my favorite is cube both sides here, a cubed, b cubed equals negative 1 over 27. And then from here, solve for b cubed, write it as 3 root 2 over 2 minus a cubed, and then take that, take that, and substitute here. Yay! That's how the cubic formula works. And we get the following, a cubed multiplied by 3 root 2 over 2 minus a cubed, equals negative 1 over 27. How nice, right? Radicals, fractions, so on and so forth. So many, uh, so much craziness going on. Okay, but one thing is going to make things easier if you set a cubed equal to c, because I already used a and b, remember? Uh, you get the following, c, 3 root 2 over c minus c squared equals negative 1 over 27. And guess what? This is a quadratic equation, which can, you can solve by the quadratic formula, and you can just go ahead and back substitute, so on and so forth. But as you can see, we've done like more than half of it, maybe just barely, and it is kind of painful. So let's go ahead and talk about the second method, and possibly we can talk about a third method. I don't know. Let's see what comes up. But here's my second approach. So we have this equation, which is kind of radical on the constant. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 4 because, you know, we'll get rid of the fraction. So, like this. And let's put uh, subtract 3 root 2. Awesome. And then, I want to go ahead and solve this problem, right? How do I solve it? Okay. I can guess and check, but... Are there any rational solutions? So we have something called rational root theorem. I can look at the divisors of the constant divided by the divisors of the leading coefficient. Oh man, but this is not even rational. So that's the problem. That's a huge problem. But we can rationalize it somewhat. I'll tell you how to do it. So there's a couple of different ways to go about it, obviously. One of which is kind of making this a monic polynomial. You don't have to do it, but we can do it. So here's how we can do it. Multiply everything by 2, and I'll tell you why. Now, this allows you to uh, write 8x eight x, eight x cubed as 2x to the third power, and this one as 4 times 2x. 
And that's kind of nice because now we can go ahead and replace 2x with y and we get y cubed plus 4y minus 6 root 2 equals 0. At this point, you can do a couple different things, one of which is the following. Okay, I want to guess and check. I kind of have 6 root 2 on the right-hand side, but I only have the um, integer, positive integer powers of y. So if y is an integer, it's not going to work because powers of y are going to be integers. Their sum is never going to be an irrational number. So I'm thinking, shouldn't y contain root 2? Yes. And you can kind of guess, like, hey, can y be root 2? Can it be 2 root 2? Can it be negative root 2? Can it be 3 root 2? So on and so forth. But if you think about negatives, if y is negative, y cubed is negative, 4y is negative, the sum of two negatives can never be positive, so that tells you y must be positive. Great. I'm also going to show you something else about the, the y being uh, positive in this case, because there's another way to look at this function too. And I'll also show you a graph at the end, so there a lot of things we're going to talk about. But we can kind of try to guess. Uh, if y is equal to y, uh, root 2, root 2 cubed is 2 root 2, and 4 times root 2 is 4 root 2, and their sum is 6 root 2, which is the constant. So root 2 works. Yay, we got it. Okay, you're not always going to be that lucky, but root 2 seems to work. But let's go ahead and look at it at a deeper level, and then we're going to talk about the function in general and also look at the graph. So here's a nicer way to write it. Since uh, I already monicized, or is that a word? I don't know. I just made this polynomial monic. So let's go ahead and work with that. y cubed plus 4y minus 6 root 2 is equal to 0. Oh, by the way, I could also show you from the original one. Maybe instead of that, let me show you this. Okay. Uh, that way um, it's a little uh, harder and you can see the easier version. 4x cubed plus 4x minus 6 root 2 equals 0. I think that was the original, right? Or did I mess up on that? 3 root 2. Okay. Not 6 because we kind of cube it and then and double something. Okay, this is 3 root 2. And because we doubled both sides, that's how we got it. So now forget about the other one, and let's go ahead and take care of this. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Since I see uh, root 2 here, I'm just going to assume a solution of the form x equals a root 2. Make sense? And then uh, x cubed is going to be from here a root 2 to the third power, which is a cubed times 2 root 2 or 2a cubed root 2. So let's go ahead and plug it in here. 4 times x cubed, which is 2 times a cubed times root 2, plus 4x, which is 4 times a times root 2, and then minus 3 root 2 equals 0. The good thing about this uh, solution is root 2 is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with, hopefully, uh, uh, everything uh, is going to be rational. All right? So we get 8 root 2a cubed plus for a, I should probably write the root 2 last, I don't know, 8a cubed root 2, and allow me to do the following, I changed my mind a lot, so take out root 2, okay, that's better, 8a cubed plus 4a minus 3 is equal to 0, awesome, now we can divide both sides by root 2, or just totally forget about it, and now we can use the rational root theorem, but again, that's going to be a little painful, you can still go with the 2a cubed thing, plus you know, uh, 2 times 2a, uh -oh, minus 3 equals 0. One of the things that's really nice about this, suppose 2a is equal to t, is the following. The sum of the coefficients is 0, so t equals 1 is a solution. But what is t? t is equal to 2a, so a is equal to 1 half. Awesome. So a equals 1 half is a solution of this equation. But wait a minute, where does the a come from? I was supposed to work on this equation, right? 4x cubed plus 4x minus 2, 3 root 2. But I just assumed x is equal to a root 2. So I got a equals 1 half. And let's write this. x equals a root 2. So x is root 2 over 2. Wow, that's great. So root 2 over 2 seems to be a solution to this equation. And I'm going to show you on the graph that it works. But how does this work from a functional standpoint? Is that the only real solution, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. If I call f of x equals 4x cubed plus 4x minus 3 root 2, 
and differentiate this function, okay, then I'm going to get the following. f prime is going to be 12x squared plus 4. And this is always positive, which means our function is increasing, and it's only going to intersect the horizontal line at a single point, or the x-axis. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we're going to finish up. So here's the graph of our polynomial, and root 2 over 2, point A is a x-intercept, which is a solution for this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.